This is an epic book review mix mishmash with Amy Gonzalez. There you go. Love the ditty. I didn't, I didn't know what theme music to use today. I have like epic book review. I have my podcast theme. So I just, I kind of, I kind of froze there for a second. I think you picked the perfect choice. All good. <laughs> so I've had Amy on the podcast. Uh, so I don't know if it was like several years ago, her and I have talked over the years. She is an absolutely amazing leader. I know we connected You were a principal at an elementary school at the time. Uh, you just mm -hmm. finished your district, like, like you're not busy enough right already you finish your dissertation and now you yeah, have a yeah. you have a we're going to be talking about this right away uh she has a new book out uh, with dotty hall and it's called the principal all communities deserve a practical guidebook for campus leaders and just knowing amy knowing her focus on really helping every single child in school uh i know it's going to be an amazing book and you can actually check it out in the description down below uh if you want to check out the book um but you're just an absolutely amazing leader. I we I know this podcast is going to be about one fifth of the time that we just spent talking before the podcast. Yes. Right. So, Amy, and so you were a principal, did your dissertation, but you have a brand new role. Before we get into the book, can you tell everyone about the role you're doing right now, and and you know why you you told me how much you love it. So tell us a little bit of what you're doing now. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much, George. I uh, did recently graduate with my uh, doctorate in educational leadership and policy and very excited. Uh, it's actually through the cooperative superintendency program here in Austin at UT. And ideally, uh, graduates from this program will go into central office positions with the intentions and, 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 and sometimes that, that desire to, to end up in a superintendency role. Uh, I I don't know what that path, what my path looks like in the future. However, thinking about my experience, I've had 20 amazing years in elementary. I really felt before I stepped out of the campus role, I wanted to get some secondary experience. I felt like that was going to be important if I was going to be leading a district at some point in time that I had some context. Um, and so currently, I'm very fortunate that I am the academic dean at Crockett Early College High School. Um, and you know in education how we love our acronyms. I'm learning a whole new set. <laughs> there are so many new programs, uh, new strategies, all the things. And I have literally like within six weeks of, of being on the campus and starting the school year, I was like, my mind has expanded. I have grown. I already know I'm going to be a better district leader because of my time that I'm spending here. And so I'm just so grateful to have both sides of the spectrum now, right? So we were, you know, getting sweet, sweet little kindergartners into the building. And I'm, you know, now we're talking about graduation of seniors. Um, what, what a wonderful experience. You know, I, this, and this is one of the things I've always appreciated about you is just how thoughtful you are and how you didn't just kind of like say, I'm going to check a box get this you know because there there is sometimes uh, and this uh, this is a truth in all professions i don't want this to think i think a lot of times we think oh this just happens in education but you know you check the boxes that you needed to check mm -hmm. to get into a superintendency role into central office but you're like you know i want to make sure that I can serve all people and so that to me is it will pull you there um, when, when the time is right, but just making sure that you can, you know, help the needs of people that you haven't worked with traditionally in the past. Now you can, I, I just really mm -hmm. appreciate that about you. Cause you could have just went in and said, yeah, I don't really care. <laughs> you know, that too. No. That, that's how that happens in education. It's like, no, I've checked all the boxes. Give me the job. And it's like, well, right. I, so I, I think that's a really, um, Thank I, you. I've always yeah, appreciated about that. Yeah. Yeah. It took a lot of reflection and a lot of deep thinking, but I'm like, nope, I, I think this is the right move. And very quickly, I realized I did exactly what I needed to do. Yes. Very happy. Thank you. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And that that's, and right away, by the way, anyone listen to this, this is why I've always really appreciated connecting with Amy because she's very thoughtful. Like nothing is just, you know, um, she, nothing is just like, I'm just doing this on a whim. You're like 10 moves ahead on why you're doing <laughs> something. So I really appreciate that. So uh, you have this wonderful book and it is uh, available. I think by the time, 
Uh, people are hearing this. It should be available for purchase for sure pre-order. And it is titled, mm -hmm. just as a reminder, The Principle All Communities Deserve, A Practical Guidebook for Campus Leaders. So I just wrote down three really simple questions so people can kind of learn more about you uh, and Dottie in the book. So first of all, um, you know, principal is a pretty easy job, right? Like, you know, it's like the yeah. easiest, probably one of the easiest jobs you could do. It's just a way and to get paid, you know, big, the big bucks, <laughs> right? <laughs> that is, by the way, literally my most hated comment ever. Oh is. gosh. Yeah. No, no that's all you don't come at me bucks. with that. <laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> no, no, just, you know, just forget about my humanity, you know, it's all about the big bucks. Right. And so I know this is such a timely book because there's so many um, school leaders that feel not supported necessarily. And um, it, uh, let's see, I got a little theory. Let's see if you agree with this. Okay. The most amount of retirements and the most amount of new principles happened in 2030. <laughs> the most amount is like literally the exact same time. It's like, right. I, I either know people who retired in 2020 or started their first admin job in 2020. Is that how accurate is that statement? I, I feel pretty good about that statement. <laughs> yes. right. I, for, of all the years, that was the year that had the most turnover. All right. So first of all, why did you feel the need to write this book? Like what, what problem do you feel this is solving for, you know, principles specifically in, in your writing? Yeah. Well, I love the, I'm going to use one of your words you just said, George, I love that you said thoughtful, um, mm -hmm. because a lot of thought went into this book. And, and I think I want to be incredibly transparent and say, this has been a labor of love for almost 10 years. I'm not going to lie. Like I knew that I am an educator who believes in the power of positivity um, and you and I talked about the yeah. difference between positivity and toxic positivity, right? But I know that I come to the table um, with that mindset of like, I'm here to support all students. I'm here to support all, all the adults too. And at a very, very early on in my career, it's like, I want to write a book about just good things. Like, mm -hmm. what are all the good things we can do to help one another um, that at the end of the day, I know are going to help our students. So very thoughtful in the sense that over the last several years, Dottie Hall, who was uh, one of my professors in our principalship program, we would meet together regularly and she, like she wanted to write a book. I wanted to write a book. We're like, let's do it together. Let's let's put something together. Let's put something out there. And we met. This was maybe just like two or three years in. We we're just like, what 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 is the reason? Like, why do we want to do this? And it's because we wanted to provide administrators like that glimmer of hope like no matter where we are no matter what time of you know period we're in there's still good out there and we still have a really big job of educating all our kids mm -hmm. and I think that what we said we would say like we want a, a, a like a little shot in the arm like you're doing what you need to be doing here's some very tangible ideas some things that you can implement tomorrow based off reading this book. And we want you to feel good about it. We want you to enjoy your job and find that joy. And I think for me, after, after writing this now, you know, as a, as a principal during the pandemic, that relevancy is understanding what crisis is and knowing that we're good. We, we just can't stay away from it. It's, it's going to happen. It's bound to happen. But when you put some of these systems in place, you're going to be able to get your staff through those moments together, get to the other side, not just like the, I, I don't believe in those. It's like, we're just surviving. I want to be thriving as well. That, right. And so you know, the, that's the, important. The, the thing that you said, and it was like kind of a little light bulb for me is when, when you say when I, what's the, okay, what's the symbol? I'm going to see, I'm going to see how accurate this is. What is the symbol you think of when you think of positive? That's the first sign. I'm going to go plus sign. Plus sign, right? And when you think of negative, mm -hmm. you think of the minus sign. Right. So a plus mm -hmm. sign for me is about, I think this is the way both you and I see it, is about forward, right? It's not mm -hmm. about, um, I think even optimism and positivity, optimism is like a hope that things get mm -hmm. better. Positivity for me is about an action to make things better. And so when you say that terminology, it is actually about finding ways as you just 
as you just beautifully articulated, not to just like make it through the day, but really to make this an incredible experience, not only for your staff and your students, but for yourself. Like I, I will tell you as a pr principal is my favorite job ever in education. I love being mm -hmm. a principal and, yep. and it wasn't because it was super easy. Right. Um, right. Yeah. There, you know, I, I know this is a, a side question that I wasn't planning on asking you. I think that, I think the biggest thing for me, why I really loved it was I felt good or bad. I had, I had a lot of ownership on the process as a principal, like what, mm -hmm. no matter what. And I think the biggest thing for me was trying to create a culture where people also felt that ownership because I knew how much it made an impact on me that they saw themselves mm -hmm. as part of the community as a whole, right? Like that right. we move forward together because of our, you know, actions. Is that like a fair statement to say? Because, you know. Yes. And I, I love that you just said the word community, because again, thinking about being thoughtful and intentional, we actually had a different working uh, title, but after a lot of reflection and having some of our colleagues read through the book, like what they felt were like highlights, it was really the fact that we talk a lot about not just the students. It's not just about the teachers. It's not just about the parents, right? right? It's not about the, it really encompasses all of it because I, I'm not just in charge of 750 children. I'm not just in charge of a hundred staff members. I literally have an entire community right. that's looking at me. You had an entire community looking at you when you were in the principalship. And I, and I think when we are in that role, while that sounds like an incredibly daunting task and to right. lots of pressure, that is the truth though. You have so many eyes on you and they all deserve for you to be able to, for you to be at your best. Um, and then for them to all be able to, to get their best. That makes sense. I love, it. I love it. All right. Okay. So second question here, you've written this book, somebody picks it up, reads it. What do you hope? And I think you a little bit touched on this. What do you hope that it yeah. actually achieves? Um, you know, sure. for somebody reading this or, you know, a group of people reading this together, what, what do you hope that it achieves? So I, I, I have no doubt that there are several other positive principles, right? I had the beauty of working with so many. I love my colleagues, you know, great partnerships. I felt like, uh, you know, when we were going through those, that initial year of the global pandemic and we had to lean on each other, like we were really like cheering each other on and, and problem solving together. But I do feel that so many leaders feel like they're working in isolation, mm -hmm. right? So I, I'm just on an island all by myself. And at the end of the day, I want you, you're not like we kind of talk about the importance of making relationships with other colleagues, like finding your thought partner, finding that person that you know you can you can get to. We know it's lonely at the top. That that's that is the case, absolutely. Um, but you can still find that community. You can still find your own and build your own network and we want you to enjoy it. Right. We want you, like you said, we want you to love what you're doing. Um, and one of the chapters in the book is really what I, what, what I feel like is incredibly relevant right now. You and I have talked about the, the, the self-care word. Uh, you know, that's something that I spoke to on our last podcast with you, how it's not just a buzzword. Like it's really something that we have to, to do to be able to sustain in these positions that we hold, these really important positions. And so I think even if somebody reading that chapter and realizes that, whoa, this hit really hard, what do I need to change in my practice to be able to continue to be successful and feel good in this role? Um, and, and yeah, I know relationships are important. I want to make sure all my kids are learning in the building. I have my vision. But most importantly, I also know how to take care of myself. And I don't think we talk enough about that, George, in, in our profession, right? It's almost like a badge of honor. Like, I didn't eat lunch today. I didn't, you know, I had a Cheetos and a Dr. Pepper on my way to, and, and that's how we operate. Nobody says uh, in education, like, oh, I got to sit down for 30 minutes and had a full you know, meal. But guys, we do need to eat. That's important. Absolutely. Well, you know, you know, um, 
this is like, uh, this is true. And I, I, I don't feel guilty for saying this at all. When I was a principal, I was like one of the first people <laughs> to leave school at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. it wasn't because I had a bunch of stuff to do, but I was just like, I didn't have, I didn't want to just sit there to sit there. And I was like, just exhausted. So I would leave so I could go to the gym. And yeah. this is before I had, you know, you know, kids and I would go to the gym, I'd work out, I eat. And then after, then I would do work. And because that just worked, that just worked for me. And I actually had, and people yes. were like, you like leave pretty early. I'm like, yeah, I know. But like, I work at different times. You know, I did all the stuff mm -hmm. that I have to do now. Obviously I wouldn't leave if I had a meeting or anything like that, but it was so imperative for me to go exercise, do these things. And, uh, but also, and this is kind of a funny thing. Also, I am like, I'm a terrible sleeper and I have to go to the bathroom a lot of time at night and I would just like, couldn't sleep. And then I would like answer you know, an email in the middle of the night. Cause I just, you know, just really quickly. And they're like, what are you doing up at three in the morning? I'm like, ah, just working. <laughs> just a mess of people, you know, like they thought I was just working 24 hours. And that I, worked I mean, for you. Probably, yeah, it totally. Right. And you know, it would be, I think that's what you, I don't want people listening to the saying, I need to like leave school at the end of the day to go exercise. It is actually figuring out where you are in life, not making this, the end all be all of everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I guess maybe I shouldn't say that maybe it should be the end all be all. If you're in that space at your time of your life, I don't know, because at that time it worked for me too. Right. It was like being a principal was the most important thing to me in that point in life. I don't think it would be now. I don't know, but it, we, you and I were having this conversation before the expectation is you do a really good job, right. And put people mm -hmm. in that position, but what your really good job and what my really good job look different, um, but they still have the same goal. And the, I guarantee for both of us, it looks different now than it did five years ago that it will five years okay. from now. Right. So it's all about, it's not about everyone. You should do this. This is the pattern. It's you fig you got to figure out your own way. So I love that you said yeah. that. Cause I think, you know, what, you and I both have a big, focus on that. All right. So the last one, and a lot of people that listen to this, um, I, I've been really proud to connect with so many people over the years that listen to an author, hear someone, you know, write a book and then say, you know what, that kind of spurred me. So I, I like really kind of like get behind the scenes writing this book. What was like something that you really learned? Like, how did this help you in any way? Maybe how does this help you? Um, not only as a writer, but you know, going back to the role that you're, you're doing today. Yeah, I love that. So it was really interesting writing a portion of this book while I was uh, taking time off and not working because I would start writing and I like, I felt like I was writing with a smile on my face. Right. Like as I'm like rethinking about something, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember when we did this, that was so awesome. And what I found going through this book and, you know, and I mentioned, you know, the reflection piece of like, what was my next role going to be after I left the principalship? Um, and a lot of people assumed, you know, I was going to go a certain way. But what I realized was I did love the job. I really oh. did enjoy being on a campus. And when I got to a point where I felt like I wasn't able to sustain and do my best, it, it wasn't because it, it wasn't for the love of the children, it wasn't because of the love of the job. It was it was just kind of compounding of the different things that I was going through during that time in my life. Like you kind of referred to, like you just were in a different time and space. And so I was so grateful to be able to have this piece happening, to be writing and engaged in this, because what it did for me was it, it, it did lead me into back to the school building, into the role that I'm in now. And I'm so grateful for that. And what it also helped me realize is, boy, do we all have stories. Like right. we all have stories and I felt like we could have probably put in 50 more, you know? So that was interesting. It was a different kind of writing, right? After, after writing the dissertation and that type of clinical writing, very, very, you know, precise in, in the research base, being able to just write about my lived experience mm -hmm. was such a joy. Um, and I, I, I really had a great time connecting with Dottie Hall. Um, just, it was just, it was fun. I had fun doing it. And I think that that biggest piece that aha was like, I'm exactly where I need to be. And I'm really happy about that. This, mm -hmm. this is enjoyable work. I'm an educator through and through. I love kids. I love supporting adults. 
um, and, and I'm right where, where I need to be. And you, you know, as all you are listening to Amy, um, a lot of people say like, I want to write a book. I'm like, that's the worst approach. It's just not, a, that's, don't, <laughs> it, it's not, it's not a checklist thing to do. Right. Yeah. The best books come from, I'm really passionate about this and I feel I have something to say, and then the book will come. And the best problem you can have, and it's kind of like, you kind of said this is you're like, oh my God, I have to like cut some stuff. Cause I, I could just go on forever. And that tells you something. Whereas if you're just trying to write a book, you'll have a hard time filling it in. Right. And so those are obviously to me the best books. Cause you can feel that passion, that enthusiasm. And mm -hmm. as you said, this has been something that you have, you know, been percolating over for, for years. And um, I, I just, I'm, I want to let, let you know how proud I am of you. I've known you for a long time. I know you just really do great work. I know how much your staff loved you. Uh, I don't know about your new staff if they love you. I can't that. <laughs> sure. We'll say I, they do. Yeah. yeah. Let's just say they do. I'm sure. I'm sure they do. Um, but I know, I know your last staff really appreciated you. And I, I got tons of message about you, um, when, when, uh, you were there too. So, um, everyone please check out the principle. All communities deserve a practical guidebook for campus leaders by Amy Gonzalez and Dottie Hall. It's actually in the description down below. Congratulations again. I'm, I'm so proud and uh, I know it's going to have a, such an impact. Uh, thank you everyone for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, George. I appreciate your time. Take care. Bye-bye.